Pepsi. Pepsi. You hear me, Sha? Pep. <laughs> That's the biggest. And um, whatever. In this video, I'm sharing some of the highlights of my quarantine week. I cut my hair, nearly set fire to the kitchen, and tackled the garden. That's what I got up to this week. Let's start off with the garden. It felt so good to get on top of it after like winter and get up all of the leaves, cut the grass and pot some plants. So here's the garden. When it comes to the garden and especially my backyard, I just try and keep the grass nice and trim. I try and get the grass in good condition, but I kind of have crap grass, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to give it, this is its second cut so far. I did cut it about three weeks ago because I had a lot of leaves. So I kind of just mulched the leaves up and I'm giving it its second cut. So the condition has started to improve on it. It feels so good to cut the grass because all over winter it was just annoying me and I had leaves everywhere and it generally looks quite messy so I was happy to tackle the lawn. I am really lucky to have some trees just right beside my house but the one thing that comes with the trees is lots of fallen leaves that I have to sweep up. I got the majority of the leaves swept up a couple of weeks ago um, and I generally leave the leaves in the flower beds to kind of just like because leaf mold is good for the soil and then I just sweep up the rest. Over the past week I've also finally gotten around to painting the walls and it's been great having this time off because I'm actually able to do it. I haven't painted my windowsills and my walls in about, I'm going to say three years. Um, that paint I'm using, the Santex paint, is really good. It goes on nice and thick and you generally, it will hold its colour and you don't get much peeling with it and all I do to prep is just peel away any paint that is chipped sweep it down I don't put as much prep in as I would like a piece of furniture and I just paint with the window sills I gave them two coats of white paint but when it came to like the wall I just put on one fresh coat of white paint this sand has or sorry this paint has like sand grain in it so it's quite thick and it gives you really good coverage <music>
I don't have a power washer because I would love to clean the pavement. I actually don't have an outdoor tap to hook up a power washer to. So I think I need to maybe rent one that I can use without a hose or something. Before all the garden shops close, I picked up some annuals. So I love having a few pots of annuals because they add some colour. So when I'm waiting for the spring bulbs to kind of die off and the summer flowers, the perennials to grow, it's nice to have like a bit of colour just to fill in any gaps. So I'm also going to be working on a project in the next few weeks and I decided to pot these up in preparation to get them growing. It's also worth noting that you need to protect any of your annuals from frost. So we are coming into April so there's still a risk of frost so you can just um, cover them with some fleece or bring them inside. In my tire I took out all of the weeds and I'm planting some cottage mix seeds. I love cottage mix but I don't want to put the seeds in my border because it can kind of look a bit wild so I'm just putting some of the cottage mix into this tire and my chair planter from last year because the bees love them and it gives me that kind of wild look but it's contained in the one space. Here's how my flower bed is looking at the moment. Generally I try and have something in my flower bed that flowers at different times. So I'll have the spring bulbs, then I'll get some summer flowers. There's gonna be some alliums, there's roses. I have some foxgloves and then I'll have some autumn flowers as well inside. And I generally pop in one or two dahlias as well for autumn. I am no pro when it comes to gardening at all. I just do a lot of trial and error and I just see what works. So another thing I did this week was I cut my hair. I haven't had a haircut from a hairdresser since January 2019. I got a proper haircut I remember before going to Marrakesh and I haven't had a haircut since and it's I generally, I just cut it myself and I don't really like going to the hairdresser. I like someone who, like I used to have a girl, Molly, who would come to the house um, and she went to Canada, but she's back now. Well, we're in quarantine, so she can't cut my hair. But I don't generally like going to the salon because I find it's a bit boring. Some people love it, but also, also, I claim no responsibility if you cut your hair and you make an arse of it, that's your own business. There is loads of methods and different ways to trim your hair. Just search on YouTube, but this is how I trim mine and I style it to make it look like a faux hair salon blow dry. Okay, let's start with the haircut. So, I have a lot of hair and it's quite thick, so make sure you brush it and brush it some more. You want this to be as perfect and not free as you can. I'm just gonna be taking about an inch off my length. So I'm just getting an elastic band and I'm tying it at the bottom and I'm pulling it nice and straight. I'm then gonna use my finger as a guide to cut straight across and I'm roughly gonna cut off an inch, an inch and a half. There are tons of how to cut your hair videos on YouTube and loads of different methods. So definitely have a look before trying mine and I take no responsibility for you cutting your hair. <laughs> and I also just trim up my sides as well. Blondie, do you want a haircut as well? Cause I mean, that could be arranged. <laughs>
To give myself a faux blow dry look, I use my GHG and I just curl the ends of my hair inwards and that gives you a little bit of volume. I do try and blow dry in the volume, but I find by just curling the ends under, you get that fake salon blow dry effect. Now, I know we've tackled the haircut girls, but y'all need to check out the grey hairs back here. Mother of God! <laughs> That's bad, see? I'm showing my age now, I really am 32. I am a badger. Not too bad on top, but there's no way I'm going to get through quarantine with these grey roots. Do you know what I mean? So... I'm gonna have to like chalk paint these grey roots or something because <laughs> they bad. <laughs> I have been back baking this week but this week it was, I'm going to say it was an almost fail. It wasn't a total fail. However, I learned some valuable lessons in this week's baking edition and you'll just have to see for yourself. What else do I need? So for these, I don't know what to call them, Rice crispy Mars Bar Biscuit things. We need Rice Krispies, which I think a lot of people are making these because there was hardly any Rice Krispies left in Tesco. I've got Mars Bars Dairy Milk, Milk Chocolate. Then, girls, I still don't have no bacon tray, but because these are gonna be biscuity, I'm gonna use this roasting dish. Have a bit of baking paper and my saucepan. Okay, Joanne Condon sent me this recipe. I think it's from, I'm scrolling to find the recipe because we send each other memes all day. <laughs> and funny videos. Okay, Mars Bar Biscuits. I think this recipe is originally from an Avoca book. So I need to do a bit of maths because the quantities that they have in this recipe is like it'd feed an army. So, like they have six Mars bars. Where would I be going with six Mars bars? I just bought four. Basically all we need for this is Mars bars, butter, rice krispies and milk chocolate. There are four recipes. Cut the butter and the Mars bars into small chunks and place in a saucepan. Put over a low heat and stir with a balloon whisk. Guess what we don't have girls? We don't have a balloon whisk. Fear not. I've just googled what, what can you use instead of a whisk and it says you can place two forks together. That's a whisk girls. We are inventive. I'll put the recipe that Joanne sent to me because a lot of you guys you probably have families and you can make the big batch. I'm gonna half the batch because I want half the amount. So I'm gonna do my calculations and I'll come back to you. I'm gonna chop up my markers into like little cubes. So I need 100 grams of a butter. So my trusty weighing scales are coming out for this. There is my 100 grams of butter. So I'm gonna add the two of them to my saucepan. So I'm going to make, oh it's starting to melt. I have weighed out my rice krispies and my mixture. Let me get a zoom in on this. I feel like Jamie Oliver. <laughs> uh, you can't really see. <laughs> but let me see. So my mouth mixture is ready. So I'm gonna add it in and I'm gonna add this to my Rice Krispies and store it. And then this is going in the microwave to melt. Make that a bit easier. Cause this gets poured over the top. I may have put in slightly extra chocolate cause I love chocolate. Okay, let's pour.
You know what's funny? The Rice Krispies are actually going snap, crackle and pop, just like the ad. <laughs> Now I'm gonna have to, when I pour the chocolate. I think these are gonna look good. Right, let's see how the chocolate looks. Oh no, oh no! I don't know what I did. Oh, the alarm's gonna go off. Oh, it's like, it's like my chocolate went on fire. Wow. Shoot. So, I've used most of the chocolate now. I have this much chocolate left. And I'm gonna melt it the old fashioned way over a stove. I'm not going to be beaten. Why did that happen? Anyway. Okay. I'm gonna clean my stove, my bowl, and I'm gonna melt the last of this chocolate over a saucepan with a bowl. Well, I only had enough chocolate to cover half. I don't think I have anything in my presses. So, kind of a fail-ish, but as you can see, I only had enough to cover this half, and this half is naked. But, I, I suppose I can still eat them. <laughs> what you're supposed to do is cover the whole top in chocolate, let it rest, when it's rested, chop it up into squares and you have the little biscuits. So I'll let this settle and then I'll cut it up and see. But that's what it's supposed to look like. Not this. So I'm cheating a little and I'm tasting the bit that doesn't have chocolate on top. They're taking ages to set. I think I might put them in the fridge. So these just taste like Rice Krispie buns but Gooey. Well, I think they're supposed to be eating hard like Rice Krispie biscuits. I actually think I need a nap. <laughs> Too much stimulation for one day. <laughs> I'll put them in the fridge and then I'm gonna have a nap. I'm really raging about my chocolate, but okay. So I know I may have had a baking fail, but these taste delicious. So I let them set, also it's the next day by the way. This is next day, dainty. Um, I've just made a cup of tea, have my lunch in the oven. I feel like that's all I say, <laughs> lunch all the time. So when I put these guys in the fridge, I did have a cheeky um, taste of them <laughs> last night. I kept eating them. So. The ones that have chocolate on them are really tasty, even though I didn't get enough. But the little nude ones that have no chocolate on them are still delicious. They taste like a Rice Krispie bun. So I have, <laughs> I've been milling into these. <laughs> I would love to know your baking fail. I learned that chocolate needs to be stirred you can't leave chocolate unattended and it's probably better to melt it over a pot than it is in the microwave that's what i learned so have you had any baking fails if so what were they if you've any funny stories pop them in the comments because we could all do with a giggle but i i'm gonna redeem myself and say that these aren't a total fail i won't be gift wrapping them and giving them to anybody but they're grand for me. <laughs> so that is some of the highlights of my random kind of week in quarantine. Obviously they are just some fun kind of highlights and I don't want to be sharing the kind of negative. However, I think it has to be like acknowledged. Um, so even though I did have some fun this week, I have noticed that my sleep is starting to kind of be affected. And I did hear on the radio that they were saying, um, I wasn't really paying attention, but they were saying something about people's anxiety and sleep and crazy dreams uh, because we're not in like a proper kind of routine. So I'm still trying to stay in a routine. I'm still getting up in the morning getting dressed showered as if i'm going to work but i'm not going 
and also I've been trying to do nighttime meditation so I use the Calm app and I try and do like a 20 minute fall asleep body scan med meditation and I also journal so I am gonna, do you know what? And this is going up on Sunday, I'm going to start my week on Sunday. I was reading, it's called The Artist's Way by, I can't remember the author, but if you search The Artist's Way, it's about morning pages and journaling and artist dates. And I had gotten to like week three back in January and because I was getting up at like 6am, I was finding it really hard to do the morning pages because I'd have to get up at half five to do them. And now I have all the time to do that. So it's called The Artist's Way. Um, I can't remember the author, but it's like a really notorious book. You can't get it on Audible. You have to get the hard copy because it's like a workbook. I will link it in the description. And I've also been trying to stay off social media. Um, it gets quite like noisy. So obviously I know I upload to like Instagram and stuff but I've been trying to not stay too long on the platforms because I find I'm just absorbing all this kind of, even like I love the funny memes and I love the funny videos, but even that can get a bit deafening too sometimes. And it's nice to just kind of become silent in, in yourself, like just hear your inner, <laughs> your inner voice. <laughs> so I've been trying to stay off news as well. Um, I know what I need to know, I check in kind of, I, I'll try and watch like the 6 o'clock news and not the 9 o'clock news before bed and um, I am trying to listen to audiobooks, um, I'm listening to a good one at the moment while I'm like doing stuff in the garden, I have like an audiobook on, just something that's not, because even when you're listening to the radio and you just want the music, there's constant like COVID warnings every five minutes on the radio so they kind of subconsciously just stress me so um i'm not being oblivious to it i'm abiding by the rules but you don't have to absorb all that information every single day you can just check in see what you need to do and then that's it you don't have to it can be addictive almost refreshing the feed and looking at the news and you go from one tv station's news and then there's news on another one and it's like the same kind of thing so um yeah it's not being ignorant to everything but sometimes you just have to put your own oxygen mask on first and if it is gave, giving you the overwhelm then well you don't have to absorb it all happy cat videos and just being with yourself silence the garden is amazing i was watching gardener's world last night and um monty don was and on it the other chap was i love that program that program is like volume in an episode like in a tv show um i don't think you get gardener's world in the us you might have something similar it's on bbc and you they always look so relaxed like you never hear of like a serial killer gardener because they're all so chill so i'm hoping the garden and all that is gonna kind of make me chill that is enough rambling for this week um, I also, if you missed it on Thursday, I uploaded an Easter Easy Sew video if you want to check it out with the little Bailey's bunny. I think I'm going to have a Bailey's tonight. And um, yeah, so that's all my news. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheeky thumbs up if you did and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye.